So this is the problem, and I've gone through and I have rewritten the denominator by putting it in factor form. Now I can tell that if I set each one of these quantities equal to zero, I get vertical asymptotes of negative one and of negative three. So I'm going to go over to negative one, and I'm going to go over to negative three. All right, next up. <clears throat> As a quick reminder, when the degree in the numerator, listen up please, when the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, what do we always have? Oh, oh you got to be more specific. Horizontal asymptote at zero. So I'm going to be lazy, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Remember our function can pass. It can touch or pass through horizontal. It will never cross or touch a vertical. So I can come up to the very top, x minus 1. If there's a variable on top, set it equal to 0. And I have x equals 2. 1, 2. Does that look about right, kiddos? No, it can't be that. Is this what we have? You guys have that exact same thing? I am looking at this right now and checking this out. I got the exact same thing right now. I don't like it so far, but I got the exact same thing. So I don't know right I honestly I don't know right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off to the side, I'm gonna figure out what the y intercept is. So if I plug in zero, I get zero and zero, I get a negative. So it's zero and negative two thirds. So zero and negative two thirds. So there's a one. Negative two thirds would be right about here. Okay, so I don't know, is it like this or does it go up? I'm, what I'm going to have to do right now is I'm just literally going to have to do like some plug and chug stuff. I'm just going to have to choose some numbers. So I, this is, this is a value of what? Did I say two? So I'm going to choose a value of three just to see is it above or does it, does it, I, I don't know. I have no idea right now without using any graphing device. So can you guys do me a favor? I'm going to give us different numbers. Okay, ready? That very last row that's Jordan's all the way back, that last section of six kids, can you plug this in for me? One, two, three. I want you guys to figure out what does negative four and negative five belong to. Jose's section. Jose and Rosa all the way back. I'm going to give you the job of doing, um, now you're going to have some, you're going to have some technical work. You may have to have a grab a calculator or your phone to get the numbers, but I want you to do these for me. If this is negative one, I want negative 1.5, negative two, and negative 2.5 to know exactly what does this look like, okay? This side of the classroom, these kids over here, I want you to determine for me. Um, I want you to determine, this is two, I want you to do three and four for me. So I'm going to put it on pause. Please figure those out. Well, the class is helping me to achieve these. So when they plugged in three, they came up with an answer of one over 24. So I'm going to do, this is approximately 0 0.04. And then two over 35 was the output for four. 0 0.05. So we can see that the output is just, shh, when I'm talking, please be quiet. The output is just slightly above the x-axis. So I went over to 3 and over 4 and it's just slightly above. So it's looking like this, just slightly above and then coming down here, okay? Then I heard in the middle section, kids, I said you, you told me that at negative 2 you went up to 4. Okay, what else do we have? Anybody do negative 1.5? 4.6 repeating, so we're just going to go slightly up. If we're here, we're just going to go slightly up. And did anybody do negative 2.5? Should be the exact same thing. It should be 4.6 repeating then. Should be 4.6. So it's looking like this. Okay, Allison, your group, what do we have for negative 4 and negative 5? You got negative 2 for negative, really? Anybody else check that? Anybody else check negative four? What did you guys get? You got negative two as well? Really? So let's go over negative four and down negative two. Okay. And what did you get for what did you get for negative five? What did you say? Oh, negative seven eighths. Okay. So negative seven eighths, which is approximately it's very close to negative one. So over here is very close to negative one. Okay, this is making sense. It's going down. And it's coming back up this way. Notice, by the way, hey, this is a great question. Will this part of the rational fraction, stop talking please, will this part of the rational fraction ever intersect 
would ever intersect the x-axis. How do we know that for sure? Where do we determine if there's an x-intercept? Turn to your partner. Where, where do we look at the graph and determine the x-intercept? Look at the equation. Where do you determine the x-intercept? The numerator. And how many x-intercepts do I have? And what is it? At two. So if there's only one x-intercept, does that mean, does this part of the rational function ever cross this? Never crosses. Otherwise, we've been able to identify it up here.